This is going to be another short video tutorial about how to create a game using Touch Develop. This is for Activity 2A in my Touch Develop curriculum. Hope you enjoy. First thing you want to do is go to the website. So it's www.touchdevelop.com forward slash app. Skip by all this. <clears throat> and I've, as I've mentioned previously, you can log in using Facebook. Microsoft Live account or Google Gmail account. I'm going to use a Microsoft account. And there we go. Everything in Touch Develop is saved and synced to the cloud basically, so you don't need to save it to a pen drive or anywhere like that. All you need to do is log in with your account and everything that you create, all the scripts, the apps you create are saved against that. Um, I'm going to go back into this My First Game, which is the one I made for Activity 1B, which is just basically a ball doing that. Okay, and what we're going to show you in Activity 2 is how to create a kind of Fruit Ninja clone, but we're going to use that game as the starting point. So rather than recreating the, the wheel, we're going to edit that game. I'm going to click on where it says my first game up here, and I'm going to clone the script, which makes a copy of it, keeping everything that I did for that game. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to just change that to whatever you want. Okay, you can change the icon as well if you want while we're at it. There is a wee choice to there's a gamepad that'll do. Choose the colour you want for your icon. And if you go back to the hub you'll notice now that we've now got three apps in here. I've got this new Fruit Ninja clone. So if I edit that, um we're gonna take some things out that I don't need for this game. Okay, so I'm gonna keep the first two lines. Um, I'm gonna keep the background picture for now, although I'll probably change that to something else. We're going to keep the ball, we're going to keep gravity, but we're not going to do that. In fact, you don't need to set the colour when you're using a graphic anyway, so that's a bit pointless. So we'll cut that line out. We're going to take the boundaries out, because we need the ball to be able to fall at the bottom for this, so a boundary around the whole screen isn't going to work. We're going to keep gravity and friction, but we're going to get rid of the initial speed of the ball, because we're going to be generating that randomly. Again, we're going to get rid of that as well, and get rid of that line as well. So now we've only got those six lines left. And that's all we need for the now. We're going to use random numbers to generate the starting position and the speed of the ball. Okay, we're just going to do it in the main action right now that runs at the beginning. So we're going to take Sprite. We're going to set the Y, which is setting the Y position. Okay, and we're going to take the board height plus the sprite height. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to set I want to set the ball to be underneath the board so that you can't see it. I want the ball or whatever it is that we're going to use to appear underneath the game board. So the bottom of the game board is board height, but if we stuck it there, half the ball would be visible. Um, because the position of the sprite is the middle. So if we add on the height of the sprite, it will hide it underneath. Now for the X position, we want this to be random. So we're going to take sprite. We're going to set X. Um, and we're going to use here math. right? And we're going to use random. Now what I'm going to set, instead of giving it a random, like say random 200, which would give me a number between 0 and 199, I'm going to say board and I'm going to say width, which I missed, there it is. Right, now what that basically does is it generates a random number between 0 and the width of the board. Okay, and we're going to do another one here and we're going to now generate a random speed. Okay, so we're going to say, again, sprite, we're going to... Set the Y speed, which is set speed Y, set speed Y, and what we're going to put in there is minus 300, and the reason I'm doing that is so that it at least goes at minus 300, minus is up the way, 
So a speed of minus 300 will push the ball up the way and that's going to be the minimum speed. But on top of that we're going to take away another random amount which will be 400. So that line is basically going to generate a negative number between minus 300 and minus 700. Okay, and that will basically get the ball shooting straight up the way, as you can see there. Uh, each time I run it, it's going to come up at a different amount, as you can see. Right. And you should notice as well that it's changing the position on the X as well. Next, we're going to ra generate a random X speed. Now, for this, what I want to do is I want the ball to when it's over this side to fly to the right and when it's over this half of the board I want it to fly to the left so I'm going to use an if condition here and I'm going to say if the sprite x position is less than the board width divided by 2 now board width divided by 2 is the center of the board so I'm basically there saying if the sprite is on the left hand side of the board then I'm going to generate a random speed for the x so set speed x and I'm going to take the zero out and I'm going to say math random and I'm going to say 400 right now 400 will mean 0 to 399 to the right because positive is to the right because x equals 0 is the left hand side and then against else what we're going to say is sprite set speed x and we're going to say math random 400 as well and what I forgot to do was before there put a minus in okay so now what we've got is if it's on the left hand side we give it a number between 0 and 399 which will push it to the right and if we're on the right hand side else if we're on the right hand side because if it's not on the left hand side it must be on the right hand side we're going to give it a value between 0 and 399 negative which means this will happen right, so if I keep running it a few times it should always go towards the opposite side from where it spawns just going to try and get it going to the left here there we go right. Okay, if it's right in the middle, it could go. It could be. Uh, some of them look like they're on the middle and they're, and they're going the wrong way, but th that's working as you can see. It's. Okay, th the reason I'm doing that is so the ball doesn't just shoot straight off the screen, which you wouldn't want. You want to be able to g give them a chance to get it. Okay. Now, the thing about this is this is going to be something that we're going to need to do quite often. So I'm going to highlight this. You've got a great function in touch development that lets you create an action um, when you've basically forgot to create it. So what you do is you highlight the bit that you want to put into an action, you give the action a name and we're going to call it fire sprite and we're going to extract that and it makes that bit into a separate action which does the same thing and it automatically puts in a call to that. So if I run that again, it works just as it did before. But the advantage of that now is that if I need to fire that sprite again, all I do is say fire sprite. Okay, now if we go into the game loop, um, we'll keep this line here, which sets the speed of the sprite, the angular speed which spins the ball, because that's fine. And what we're going to add in here is an if statement for, to check if the sprite falls at the bottom of the screen. So we're going to say if sprite y is greater than the height of the board which is the bottom of the screen plus to make sure it's right out we're going to say sprite height okay so a bit like we did at the start when we're setting the when we were setting the position we're checking that it's falling straight out the bottom and then what we're going to do is we're going to fire the sprite okay so what should happen now by adding that in is it fires the sprite, it falls beneath the bottom and it fires it again and this should keep going on if you just leave this running it will keep firing it again and again now to make the game interesting we want to have some way to actually some point to the game so what we're going to do initially is we're going to add in an event 
and this event is going to be a tap sprite event. Um, you can look through the list or you can type in, which is a bit quicker. Right, so I'm looking for tap sprite and I want to do sprite. Right, we, we had called that sprite just sprite. Maybe I should have called it ball, but that's our, our ball sprite. And basically, this event will only happen if the user touches the sprite. Okay, now if the user touches the sprite, all I'm going to do now is refire it. Okay, so I'll show you what will happen. Right, so if now I tap it, and it's firing it again. Okay, so I'm basically able to destroy it, and it gets refired. Now, there's not much point to this game so far. What we need is some points. So I'm going to go back into the beginning and I'm going to create a new variable. Now when you create a new variable, always click on var if it's the first time you've made it. And you actually do the right hand side first. So give it your, your value. And in touch develop it basically can automatically figure out what data type you want from the, the value that you initialize it as. However, you can go into the global variables and you can change the data type there. Okay. And we're back into main, so I've said var x equals zero, Now I want to call this score, so click on the x, rename that to score. Um, we also want to promote to data, now you're best to actually click off and back on it again, and then promote to data, which makes it a global variable which we can access from inside the game loop. As well as that, we need something to actually draw on the game board, so we're going to create a new variable, and this is going to be from the board, which is going to be create text. Okay, I'm going to make the height a bit bigger and the width a bit bigger as well. Let's say 200. That'll do. Because I've got gravity on, I'm also going to have to set this friction. Hold on, before we do it, let's rename that and we'll call it scoreboard. Okay, and again, this will be promoted to data because we need to use it in the game loop. Next, I'm going to set the scoreboard to have uh, friction of 1. Right, and the friction of 1 means no matter what gravity is on, it won't move. And since we're using gravity in this game, we don't want it to move. I'm also going to set the position, and the X and the Y this time, which is going to be roughly at the top middle. Right, 400 along, 50 down. And lastly, we're going to set the colour of the scoreboard. And we're going to make it black. Okay, now, that scoreboard won't appear there now because we've not put anything actually into it. We'll do that in a second. Before we do that, let's go back to Fire Sprite. And what we're going to add into Fire Sprite is some points. Sorry, not Fire Sprite, Tap Sprite. So basically, what we want to do is when you touch a sprite, we want to assign points. So we're going to say score, uh, assign, yeah, which is colon equals, score, plus, and we're going to say 10. All right, so we're adding 10 points to the score and then assigning that back into the score. Um, and before we run that, we, we basically need to update that on the screen. Um, so let's do that. Let's go to game loop, and we'll just do it at the top. So it's done just before the, the, the board is evolved and the board is, is drawn by posting it to the wall. And we're going to say scoreboard, set text. And the, what I usually do here is delete out those quotes put quotes again and it gives you this box up which you can type into it and we'll say score space try and remember space click off it click back in there use this concatenate thing and then add in the score variable right and if I run that now we've got score and as we tap it we get points and we've got a game there's no end to the game so far but we have a game okay we're getting there. Now, to make this a bit more interesting, we'll make it about fruit. Right, so let's change the art. So we'll go to our ball and we'll search online for, say, melon. And there's a watermelon that we did previously. So we'll put that in instead and let's run it again. 
and now we've got a flying watermelon that we've got to touch. And again, you may want to change the background picture as well, but I'll leave that to you. Um, now, there needs to really be a point to this game, so what we're going to do in this one is we're going to use a timer uh, so that there's a limit, so you've got to try and touch as many of them as you can within the time limit. So at the bottom, we're going to have a new variable and we're going to assign into this variable time, which was the time now, the current time. Which again, that's, that sets the data type. Rename the default variable name and we'll call it start time. Click off it, click back on it, and promote it to data. Right, and we're going to do a bit like we did for the scoreboard now. We're going to create a variable to hold the text for the time limit. So, variable, we're going to say board create text. We'll do the same size that we did for the other one, 200 by 100, and we'll keep font size 40. We'll rename that to time board, or you could call it time text, whatever you want. Click back on it, promote it to data again, because we need to access it in the game loop. Um, set the friction to 1 again, so let's do time board. Set friction to 1 just to stop it moving. We'll do time board again. Set its position. Um, and we're going to put it at 400 again so it's in the middle. And we're going to put it off the bottom. So we're going to say, this time we're going to say board height minus 20. So we're bringing it up 20 from the bottom of the board. So it'll be right near the bottom. And lastly, we're going to set the colour. Again, now I'm going to set it to black again, which I think works best against this background. Alright, and then I'm going to go, after I've created that, I'm going to go into game loop, and I'm going to add in time board, set text, delete that, and I'm going to do string, and what we're going to see is time left with a space, click off it, click back on it, use concatenate, and we're going to add into that the time left. Right, before we actually post that, we're going to have to work out the time left. So this is going to be a local variable, so there, and what we're going to say is 60, because we want 60 seconds as a limit, and what we're going to take away from that is the time gone, and the way we work at the time gone is by subtracting the current time from the, subtracting the start time from the current time. Um, I'm going to do a floor which is basically rounding it but always rounding down the way because um, I want it to be a positive number here, I don't want decimal places so I'm going to floor it. In there I'm going to put time now and f I'm going to subtract from that the start time which is kind of guess that I wanted to do because it was the only variable that had time in it. So what that basically does is it takes the current time takes away the start time, so if you were at 60, sec 60 seconds gone and the start time was 30 seconds, that would give you 30. And then the time limit is 60, so take that away from the 60, that would mean you had 30 seconds left. I'm going to rename this sprite and call it time left. And this one I'm going to leave as a local variable because we're only using it inside here. And I'm going to put in time left here. Okay, and let's run that. And we now have a time counter at the bottom, as you can see, it's counting down. One thing we didn't do, though, is actually tell it to end. So, let's add in this to the game loop. We're going to say, if time left is less than or equal to zero, then we're going to basically end it. We're going to use the bizarre thing, which... Uh, Let's just make a leaderboard. So we're going to post leaderboard score and we're going to post the score to the leaderboard score, funnily enough. Um, we're also going to uh, post the leader, post it to our wall so we can see it. And then lastly, we're going to stop the game. So time, stop. 
Uh, now, to test this, I'm going to change our time limit down. This is what you do when you're testing the game. You change variables, right? So we've got one, two, three, four. I'm going to miss one deliberately there. I missed that one. Oh, too fast. I missed it. And time's about to run out. And there we go. Time's run out. The high scores come up. Now, if you publish it, you'll get a high score table coming up here as well now. And that's has basically created a very simple game now. One problem with what we've just done is that uh, in these kind of games you don't touch the sprite, you swipe through it. So there isn't actually a built-in one at current in Touch Develop for doing a swipe through. There is a swipe sprite which swipes from the centre of the sprite, but we want to start and actually swipe through the sp sprite as if we're cutting through it. Um, I've made a game library that does that, so we want to add that in. So if you click on libraries and do plus and type in game events, I've called it. And hopefully it'll come up. Right, so David Retton, Game Events, add that one in. Right. And we've got a few different things here. We've got Touch Hold, we've got Check Swipe, and we've got Back Collisions, which is for a different game. Now, if we now go into Events and we add in, this time we want to add in a Swipe Board event. Okay, which detects a swipe on the board and it gives us the start position X and Y and it gives us delta X and delta Y which is the length of the swipe. And we're going to use this in the wee function that I've created. And what I'm going to say is if, uh, and there's a wee, there's a special symbol for this, it's this one here in libraries. If game events, check the swipe and we're going to pass into it the X from the swipe that in this function here. So we're passing in the starting x, y position and we're going to pass in the length of the the swipe which basically gives my wee function the information it needs to work out what the swipe you have just done. Um, and what we want to check it against is not time board but we want to check that you, you swiped the sprite which is the ball. Okay so we're saying give it the swipe Tell it the board that we're using, which is the game board, and check to see if you've swiped through the sprite. And if it does that, we're basically going to do some of the same kind of things that we did over here. Okay, so what we're going to say is... Um, we're going to fire sprite, so in fact, I'm to just copy it from this one now. So let's go back into tap sprite and let's just copy these two lines. We'll, we'll cut them out. So cut the selection, go back into this one, and we'll paste them in. Okay, and you can now go back to the tap sprite, click on it up there, and delete it. So we've now got swipe sprite, which if you run that, it should do the same thing. There we go. We, if you hold down the mouse, if you're using a computer to test it, and as you see now, we can swipe through the sprites, and that works on a touch screen as well. Okay, I'm going to put this time loop back to 60 before I forget to do that. Okay. And now we pretty much have the game that we were trying to create. It's a bit dull though, isn't it? Because um, it's slightly dull in that we haven't we've only got one fruit so let's create a bad fruit so let's go into art and let's add in a picture I'm going to call bad fruit um, I think I called it bad sprite in the notes but we'll call it bad fruit right? and we'll search for Brussels sprout which I cannot stand so we've got the bad, isn't actually a fruit, we'll call it veg. Yuck. Right, there we go. Very technical term for it there. Veg, yuck. Right, I do actually like other vegetables, but that's just one I'm not fond of. Um, to allow us to be able to fire more than one sprite, I want to use this fire sprite routine that we wrote. However, at present it only fires sprite. We need to be able to fire any sprite. So what we're going to do is this. 
we're going to add in an input parameter and the input parameter we're going to add is going to be of type sprite because what we want to allow it to do is to fire any sprite that we tell it okay we'll keep it as sprite there okay so because we've changed that now you actually have to go through and take all these out because it's the local sprite variable that we want to use now and not not the global one okay it might have been worth out to name this something else to make this clearer so take all the sprites out and put in just the one the, the local version of it don't forget any or it'll cause you problems later on Right, so that's right, I think that's them all. You leave the the board as global. Right, so we've only made a minor change there. Anywhere you now got fire sprite, you need to go back in and put brackets in and tell it what sprite you're wanting to fire. This red indicates errors, so again, in there, put brackets and tell it we want to fire sprite. Okay, so that's all the errors away. It should still be working, hopefully. So, right, so it's still working as it did before, but we've now we are now able to use that fire sprite for for the other sprite as well. Um, we're also going to have a need to call this end game, um, depending on different things. So. This wee routine here, these three lines here, if we highlight them and extract them to an action called end game. Right, again, it will still work as it did before, but we can use that end game now. And then we're going to go back to main and we're going to add in a new sprite. You can put it where you want, I'm going to put it just right after the other sprite. So, var board. Create picture, delete that bit out, choose art, and we use veg yuck. Right, rename this to, I'm going to call it bad sprite. Click back on it, promote it to data to make it global. And now we've created that. Um, Now we're going to add in a line to fire it, so I'll just add a plus there and we'll say fire sprite, bad sprite, and let's run that. And now we've got two different ones coming. Now, we want to do this, we want to now go to game, to game loop. And we want to do some of the same kind of things that we're doing for the other sprite. Okay, so I'm going to suggest you actually copy these lines here. And we paste them in. And we change sprite to bad sprite to bad sprite. Again to bad sprite. And again to bad sprite. And one more time, change that to bad sprite. Now, the reason I've done that is so that the second sprite spins as well, and so that um, when it goes at the bottom, it refires. So if we test that now, that you see there the Brussels sprout is firing as well, but I can't swipe through it there now. Okay. So what we want to do now though is we want to check to see if you do swipe through it. So the same way that we checked for the other one. So so what we need to do is go into swipe board and add a new if in and it's going to be game events, check swipe. We're going to pass in X, Y, Delta X, 
delta y the board and lastly bad sprite and if this happens all we're going to do is end the game right so if you swipe through the wrong one which you shouldn't the game ends instantly with no points so like points for that one points for that one points for that one if that one game over okay you could put a message up saying game over as well if you like let's add in a bit of sound as well so if we scroll down to the art we can go in there and we can change picture to sound um, we can search online art, art online art and we're looking for fireball right and we're going to take that one you can play that if you want okay so that's the sound of a fireball we're going to change that to be called swipe sound and it's in there now and all we actually need to do now is very simple is if we, if we go in here and um, we'll add it in under this and we'll simply say art swipe sound play and it's as simple as that and when we swipe through it now you will get some sound coming Okay, so there'll be sound now when you swipe through that. Um, and that is pretty much it. You can do a diff you can do different things. This game change the art, change the sound, add other uh, sprites, or maybe other fruit, other bad fruit, more vegetables, whatever you want. Um, but that is the game pretty much complete. Once you're finished with it and you're happy with it, what you want to do is go to click on here and publish it. Once you've published it other people can actually play the game that use touch develop um, so you should quickly find that very quickly other people are playing your game and they actually get in your high score table. Every time you make a minor change if you want it online you need to publish again. Right so if we run that again 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. It does actually work better this on a touch device. And there we've swiped through the Brussels sprout and there we go, that's me on the leaderboard with 60 points. And you'll find it very quickly, other people will play it as well and they'll get points as well. And I'm afraid that's the end of this tutorial, have fun with that. If you've got any questions email me at drenton at readcare.ac.uk. You can follow me on Twitter. It's drenton72 and my blog is games for learning with the, n the number 4, gamesforlearning.co.uk. In fact, I'll show that in here. It's gamesforlearning.co.uk. And I'll be posting stuff in here about Touch Develop as well.